Welcome to Three Crosses Farrier Company. I'm Caleb, and we got a pretty cool video for you today. So this is Lakota. She's a Clydesdale draft horse. Some people have seen her in previous videos. I've been doing her for quite a while now. And as you can see here, she has really, really dry, hard hooves. The nippers that I'm using here are Easy 14s. They're made by GE. And I would not normally use these nippers on a draft horse. But unfortunately, the other day, my apprentice used my 15s, which is what I normally use, to pull shoes. So now I'm down a set of nippers. I have to have them sent off to be rebuilt. So at this point, I'm using my 14s, which I wouldn't normally use. The reason I use 15s is they have a longer handle and a little bit bigger head on them. But biggest thing is they have a longer handle, which gives me a little bit more leverage when trying to trim these really hard, big, dry hooves. The reason I'm not using my knife hardly at all here is because I don't know that I could physically peel this hoof out with my knife. That's how hard these hooves are. That's why I'm using my nippers is they can actually cut through and get down to where I should be and exfoliate that sole. And you can see those big cracks running through the bottom of the sole that it needs to be exfoliated, but it's, it is definitely dry and hard. Some folks live in areas that are super wet and stay that way year-round. We live in an area where it starts out super wet and goes super dry super fast. It, it, it'll happen over a week. So it does not take long for the hooves to get this way. Most of the time, I recommend that people overflow their water trough. At least get some moisture for those horses to stand in. I have found that the best way is to stick a sprinkler wherever your horses are eating or or if they come to a certain place every day. Run it for a half hour in the morning or the evening so when they come in, they will stand in the water. And this, this is fairly natural for a horse. Uh, in the wild, horses will go to water once a day and they will get their feet wet because they actually have to get down into the water. In most cases. So it, it's it's natural for a horse to need some moisture in those hooves. The other thing that I've used is a uh, hoof oil type uh, product. I've got, uh, I use Horseshoe Secret, um, but there's half a dozen different hoof oils out there that people use and seem to work really well. Now you can see here, I mean, this is... Normally, I can just nip right through, and I'm actually really working hard to nip through these. It is insanely hard to do this. Um, I don't know that I, I've had one uh, in the last month or so that was this bad. Definitely makes you work harder. One of the things about drafts is a lot of times they're done in a stanchion or a stock. And stocks are a platform, probably you know, two, three to six inches off the ground with a floor and then a frame built around that floor. And you lead the horse into there and then they have a cradle or, or bar or whatever that that hoof sits in and is strapped into and held in place while you work on them. The reason this is a common practice with drafts is if a draft horse does not want to stand there, if he, she doesn't want to or he doesn't want to be good, he doesn't have to. This horse weighs probably upwards of 1,900 pounds, probably closer to 2,000, maybe a little more. So if Lakota doesn't want to stand, she doesn't have to. So the fact that she's being as good as she is and standing here just quiet as can be is pretty impressive. A lot of draft horses don't. I think it's Partly the way they're trained, and partly it, like I said, most most farriers use staunchions, and they can really hurt you. I've I've known a lot of people that have been really hurt by a draft horse. 
Now, when I run my rasp, you'll know I run it in a circular, circular motion, uh, keeping it flat, trying to make that foot nice and flat and level. And you can see the ragged edges that we've got there. We're going to clean those up in a little bit. But look at the difference in the, the hoof health here. You can go back, I think, three or four, I don't know how many videos, but you can go back in videos that I've done previously on this horse, and you can see the transformation. A horse that went from being very wet, almost you know, softer hooves, to one that's hard, chipped. It's very different, and it's, and it's all due to her environment. Now here again, I'm using my nippers. To save myself a little extra work, I'm taking some of that flare. I've had comments where people are like, well, does this weaken the hoof wall? No, it doesn't weaken the hoof wall. Lakota has enough hoof wall for three horses. Her hoof wall is over a half inch wide. And where it's flared, it's probably an inch wide. So we want to narrow that down a little bit so that it doesn't break and chip. Another term that I've heard... Uh, in the comments and heard people ask about is the Mustang Roll. The Mustang Roll is a fancy name for basically just fortifying the toe a little bit and putting a little roll to it. The reason we do this is when we're trimming a horse and we get done nipping and rasping, if I leave it just like this, the sharp edge that remains when it hits a rock will chip and break out and look really ragged and really ugly. And so that's why we do the quote unquote Mustang roll where we come back with our rasp and kind of just put a rounded edge when we trim. There is a little bit of a split right in the front of the toe. Shouldn't be a problem. We'll round it up a little bit more and it should not continue up the hoof. I'm not super concerned about it as I think I got enough off that it won't be a problem. Now we're going to do the other foot. This is the left foot. You'll see the same thing here. You can see those big cracks and kind of little trenches. That's what we're going to try to get to exfoliate out. It's fascinating working on draft horses because they have a ton of weight, which is what causes the foot to be kind of wide and um, in some cases flat. Um, we have a lot of really good hoof here and it's actually concave this is a fairly healthy foot if if not just being a little bit long at this point but we're going to fix that with the trim again i want to clean out those commissures i don't want to leave them in there i don't want them to trap dirt and bacteria underneath those flaps same thing with with the uh with the false sole here if you leave it in there as dry as it is probably not a huge deal but the minute it gets wet, it's going to trap bacteria and whatever else she's walking through. And you can see that some of it's just ready to peel right out. Naturally, in the wild, horses travel enough distance that they exfoliate that naturally by travel and, and abrasion. But in captivity, I think Lakota's on five acres or something like that. She's not going to travel enough during a day to wear out her feet. You'll see that she broke out that lateral side, the outside of the hoof wall. Um, again, not super concerning, but you can see that her hooves are dry. And when hooves get dry, they get extremely brittle and they almost, they look like glass. And they even sound like they shatter a little bit when I run my nippers through a super hard hoof. I've had some that not, this one's not quite that dry, but you can hear the crack when you, when you, uh, you nip. Now again, just the pressure that I'm having to exude to get this to nip and break is insane. She's getting a little bit tired of me here. Again, with the staunchions, we can, we can do this, and a lot of these draft horses are done with staunchions. She stands good enough. I don't need to. These 14s... Um, you can actually spring them doing this. Um, and springing a set of nippers means that we put enough pressure on the handles that they come together. Now they're bent too close together. And actually these 14s, I did that the other day and they are a little sprung. 
but they're relatively new, so I don't want to quite go get a new set yet. I get about six months out of a set of nippers, um, especially in this area with the hooves being so dry and so hard. It, it, it definitely takes a toll on your tools. Same with your rasps. I was uh, reading comments on a farrier forum that I'm on, and they were talking about how long rasps last. Well, in the winter, I get several weeks out of one rasp easily because there's just... If they're soft, the hooves work good, but this time of year, the hooves are dry, they're hard. I'm lucky to get a week, if that, out of a set of rasps. I think the biggest thing that I hate is I have clients that have pea gravel. It's kind of like a, it literally is about the size of a pea, and it's gravel that they use for their horses. And it gets stuck in the hoof, and it gets embedded in the in the hoof wall, and the, and the, uh, Lamini wall specifically, and it really dulls things really fast. Now, again, you can see that that chip there. Um, this is an interesting fact. A lot of folks ask, like, I get calls from clients constantly, like, "Oh, my horse is chipped," and usually when I show up, it's this quarter, the portion of the hoof between the toe and the heels that is chipped. And then I have folks ask sometimes, like they'll watch me shoe, and I'll go, "Well, I unloaded the quarters. I didn't put I didn't put any uh, weight on the quarters." And I've had people ask, "Why do I do that?" Well, if you look at this horse, it's a perfect example. Those quarters aren't weight bearing anyway. If you watch a horse that's been running out barefoot in a pasture, nine times out of ten, his quarters are broke out. He just naturally does it. So. I tend to not worry too much when a quarter is unloaded like it is here. And you can see that. You can see if you look at that line that that quarter is unloaded just a little bit. I think that's far better than having a split running up the side. And, I, and a lot of guys have had issues with quarter cracks. And I've been lucky and I have not had near the issue with quarter cracks. And I think it has a lot to do with that I unload my quarters. And I had a uh, mentor of mine tell me to do that early on in my career, and I've been doing it ever since, and it works for me. Um, you'll also notice that I use saran wrap to wrap the hoof. Um, I had a lot of comments about how I'm destroying the environment and how what a horrible person I am. But I'd like to point out that everything we use is usually a plastic-based product. So even like vet wrap or any of these other options that people came forward with, most of them are made out of plastic. And unfortunately, like vet wrap, for instance, I only get one or two times, one time out of a out of a piece of vet wrap. So I feel like saran wrap is way cheaper for me, and I have it on the truck. I don't have to go looking for it, or like you know, some guys were like, "We'll cut a sock in half or whatever." And, and that works great for them, but I, I don't have that many draft horses on my on my client list. So I would do that. I'd cut a sock in half and I'd put it in the trailer. And eight weeks from now, I'm going to be looking for it and not being able to find it. And I'll end up using something else anyway. So for my opinion, this works really well for me. I don't think it's that wasteful. I use saran wrap for a lot of my uh, epoxies and things like that to protect it so I don't get dirty. Um, if I'm doing fiberglass casting on a hoof, I'm hoping to have a video of that for you guys here pretty quick because um, it is a cool process. And when I have a hoof that I don't have enough to nail to, I will wrap them in fiberglass and then nail to the fiberglass. And that'll about do it for today. As everyone's requested, here's Lakota headed back to the pasture. Like and subscribe.